This video is for junior high history. We're looking at all of the highlights from pages 318 to 325. So we're finishing up one chapter and then starting into another. So on page 318, just under highlights of South American history, very bottom of that column, highlight South America, and then highlight the most famous group, the Incas, established a great empire in the Andes Mountains. So you're going to want to uh, establish um, or associate the Incas with South America, the most famous group of South American natives. Um, if you've ever seen the, uh, the Disney movie, The Emperor's New Groove, uh, Cusco, they got his name from the capital of the, uh, the Inca Empire and uh, he is supposed to be Incan. And the place where he wants to build his new, uh, his new palace is uh, Machu Picchu, uh, which is a famous Inca site. Uh, so it's kind of funny. All right, no more highlights for pages 318 or for page 319. Turning to page 320, let's look at the struggle for independence. Um, find the George Washington of South America. That's the heading of a section there. And find the name. Uh, Simon Bolivar. Simon Bolivar. Highlight his name and then highlight a little bit further down. We have it in quotes there. The George Washington of South America. And he's called that because he is known as the father of his country. He helped his, um that area of South America uh, gain their independence from Spain. And you can see the listing there of everything that he did. He um, freed Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, and part of uh, Peru. And the part of Peru that he freed became a separate country named Bolivia in his honor. And uh, by 1830, his goals were fully accomplished and all of South America, um, except for the three Guianas, were free of European rule. So quite a guy there. We've got a picture of him charging heroically into battle, looking all fancy. So make sure you know his name, Simon Bolivar, the George Washington of South America. Second column on page 320, we're going to look at a different kind of hero here. Towards the bottom of that second column, find Bibles and Missions. Right with that, highlight one of the first Protestant missionaries to South America was an Englishman named James Thompson. James Thompson. Make sure you know his name. All right, that's the end of this chapter. Turn to page 323, beginning of chapter 18. And this is going to be our last chapter here. Under Peru, land of the Incas, find the bold term Atacama Desert. Around that, highlight Peru and Chile form the Atacama Desert. Keep highlighting. This is one of the driest regions in the world. One of the driest regions in the world. No, that's in Peru and Chile. Turning to page 324. Uh, under Ecuador. Find the bold name Quito. It's spelled with a Q there. Highlight Quito is Ecuador's capital. Quito is Ecuador's capital. Right, page 325, last highlight here. Find the heading Lake Titicaca. Lake Titicaca. Highlight Lake Titicaca. And then highlights the underlined words. It is the highest navigable lake in the world. Highest navigable lake in the world. Um, this refers to the fact that it is 12,500 feet above sea level. So it's way up in the mountains. 
Um, there are other lakes that are higher up in mountains, but they're not navigable, meaning that you can't go on them and travel on them uh, with a boat. So you can see our picture there of a Peruvian man paddling a traditional Totoro reed boat on Lake Titicaca. Uh, and these are virtually unsinkable. They are made with reeds that grow on the shore of the lake and they're tied together with, uh, with twine. Um, it's kind of a, kind of an interesting place. Um, and uh, kind of an, uh, an unusual, uh, an unusual uh, variety of creatures live there. There were rumors of, uh, of sea monsters. Uh, but when a famous French underwater explorer investigated the lake, he didn't find any sea monsters, but he found frogs that could grow almost a foot long. So a foot long frog is a pretty big frog. And found that approximately a billion of these frogs live in Lake Titicaca. A billion frogs, how about that? Um, and there's some interesting facts about the Indians of this region. Um, because the area is so high above sea level, uh, the highest that you, the higher that you go up and you travel up mountains, the less oxygen there is. Um, so since Lake Titicaca is two and a half miles above sea level, the air there contains less oxygen than the air lower down. So if uh, someone like us were to visit Lake Titicaca, uh, we'd probably get dizzy, maybe even a little bit nauseous, and we get tired very easily because we're used to more oxygen than what they have. Uh, and fires have never been a big problem there. They don't really have to worry about wildfires because fire needs oxygen in order to burn. And the Indians of the region have a larger chest and lung capacity than most people. This allows them to take in more air in one breath. So the more air they take in, the more oxygen they're also able to take in since each um, volume of air contains less oxygen. And they also have a quart more blood and one million more red blood cells than people at lower elevations. So kind of a, an interesting group of people, uh, very tough, very hardy, living in a very unusual place. So that is the last of our highlights here for today. Uh, make sure that you get your homework done and let me know if you have any questions. Um, do probably start working on your review sheet now. We are going to be taking um, an online final next Friday. So that is going to change up our schedule a little bit. Um, I did find out that we do have to have all of that finished by next Friday. So make sure that you are uh, working on that review sheet and uh, letting me know if there's any that you can't find. So I'm here uh, to help you if you need it. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you later.